In the previous video, we implemented this particular function called fnewton2 uh, to implement the Newton's algorithm for finding the roots of um, of 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 a of, 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 of arbitrary equation, right? And then it's gonna take two inputs, so h and a, uh, three inputs basically. So 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 h and dh are the function handles for the for the for the function that we're trying to find the root for, and the derivative function of this particular function of of this uh, of of the function that's pointed to by this function anyway. And then the third input is actually the starting value. We we try to come up with a arbitrary guess about what the root value actually is, and then. Uh, the Newton's method is going to start iterating from this particular starting value and then try to converge to the root. Um, and then we looked at how to how do we actually define function handles, right? So we write a function just in the normal way, right? So this is for the function, and then this is for the derivative function. So 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 for for the function y equals to x squared subtract a. Its derivative function is two, y equals to two times x. So, and both functions are going to take some kind of input x, right? And then it's going to return one out of it y, right? And then when we call this, when we call Newton, when we call the Newton, Newton f Newton two function inside of a script, for example, right? Inside of a script, we we need to define the two function handles first. Right. We looked at the syntax for defining function handles, which is basically just putting an at symbol in front of the function name. Right. So the function name is uh, is uh, is the same here, right? So f newton f underscore function, it's uh, it's the same as as in the definition of the function, right? So so, so the function name is um, is available to us once we have finished writing the functions, and then uh, this is another function name for the derivative function. So we we, we prefix the function name with the at symbol and then assign it to a variable or to a container, right? But unlike all the containers that we have already looked at so far, which store numbers or strings, right? This kind of container stores something that's called a function handle, which is basically just a pointer to the definition of the function. It's a um, it's a representation of the function. It's not it's not a representation of the output of a function. It's a representation of the function itself, right? It's a data. It's a data. It's a kind of data, right? And then when we call f newton two, we give these two function handles as the first and the second input, and then some arbitrary starting value, and then um, it's gonna produce the correct output, right? And the, close to the end of the previous video, we started to think about one possibility: is that which is that those functions. That's going to be required by the f Newton two algorithm, the, the Newton algorithm. This this function here only takes one input, right? So here we're calling the function h with just the one input x, right? Here we're calling the function dh with just the one one input x, right? But suppose the definition of the function actually requires multiple inputs, right? We looked at we started to look at this kind of situation. So f Newton function equals to with two inputs x and a, and the definition is y equals to x squared subtract a, right? So what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do in this kind of situation, right? So the definition of the function requires two inputs, right? X and a, but but the f Newton two function requires a input function which takes only one input variable, right? So 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 how can we actually um, solve this kind of problem, right? So how can we actually solve this kind of problem? First of all, there are multiple solutions to this uh, kind of situation, right? So, um, and the situation, the, f the solution that we're going to talk about today is called the anonymous function. What exactly is an anonymous function, right? For now, all the functions that we have written so far, that we have used so far, all of them actually have a particular name, right? Is f newton underscore function or f newton underscore d function or f newton two, right? And those func those names must be identical to the file name that's used for storing them, right? F newton two is for store this particular file. F newton two dot m is for storing f newton two this particular function, right? F newton underscore function is for is stored inside of f newton underscore function. And then f newton underscore d function is stored inside of f newton underscore d function, right? 
So, so, so that's that's sort of the normal way of defining functions, right? You you come up with a file, a text file, with all the text of the function or of all the statements of the function that's written inside of it, right? And then you have a name for that function, and uh, you have a file which has a name that must must be identical to the function name. Right? The anonymous function doesn't have a name. The anonymous function doesn't have a name. It could have inputs. It can have outputs, right? But it doesn't have a name, right? And because it doesn't have a name, so you usually do not store those anonymous functions into a file, right? So if you are trying to actually create an anonymous function, you 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 you, are, you 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 usually don't want to store them into a file. So what's actually the purpose of the anonymous function, right? If it doesn't have a name, the purpose of the anonymous function is to come up, is is to provide a very quick way for defining like one statement, right? As a function, if you have if your function should have just like one statement, one line of code, right? And then you don't really want to actually store them for future use, then you may want to just use an anonymous function. It's a quick and dirty way for creating a function, right? If your function has just the one line, or if the function can be actually encapsulated into just the one line, right? And then if you don't have a function name, how do you actually access it, right? If the function doesn't have a name, how do you actually use it if it doesn't have a name, right? So, so the function handle is the ideal way for us to actually access anonymous functions. Right. So we looked at in the in the previous video, we we basically looked at two different ways of accessing the same function. One is by using the function name, right? That's basically just providing the in, uh, providing the output, the output value if you give if you give it some kind of input, right? And a second way for 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 accessing the same function is by just using the function handle, right? You can use the function handle in the same way as you use a function. The function handle can also take an input, the same set of input, and produce the identical uh, output, right? Produce the exact same output. So you can use the function handle just like function name, right? So if you actually create the, the anonymous function and then assign that function, anonymous function, to a function handle, then you can use it. You can access that particular function uh, from anywhere inside of your uh, program. Right. So 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 let's look at one specific example. So so this is a. Um, uh, let's just look at the, maybe use this particular expression as an example, right? So it's gonna take it's gonna take some kind of a uh, it's a square. You're gonna square the input and then subtract another input, right? So so let's uh, let's take a look at how we can actually define an anonymous function just inside of the just inside of the command window, right? So so let's. Um, Let's uh, let's clear out all these things. Right, so now our workspace has nothing in it. So so let's define a function handle fh. It's gonna equal to. Let's look at the syntax first, right? So uh, we want to store a function handle inside of fh. So on the right hand side, we need to create a function handle. So how do we actually create a function handle? We use the at symbol, right? In the past, we have been actually putting a function name behind the at symbol, right? But if, but if but but before an anonymous function, it doesn't really have a function name. Right. So so if it doesn't have a function name, then we don't have to actually put any kind of a, a function name behind the at symbol, right? But usually the anonymous function is gonna take either zero or more than one uh, one or more in inputs, right? So if it's gonna take zero input, then you just put a empty parenthesis behind it, right? If it's gonna take one input, say x, then we put x things out of it. So that's gonna be equivalent to this thing, right? So for for the definition of an ordinary function, you have a parenthesis that's gonna to group together all the inputs, right? The same is true for the anonymous function. The only thing that's different is that for the anonymous function, it doesn't have a name, right? But it can still have a parenthesis that's gonna to group together. Uh, a bunch of inputs, right? If it doesn't have any inputs, then you just use an empty parenthesis, right? That's also okay. That's also okay. Right. So, so if your anonymous function doesn't take any kind of inputs, that's also okay. Say, um, uh, that's also okay. So, right? So, 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 and then what's going to be the body of the function? Let's let's put uh, as our first example. Let's just look at the one input x, right? And then we're gonna we're gonna 
uh, we're going to write the body of the function. The bo that's that's sort of the, 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 the input, right? That's sort of equivalent to that. That's sort of equivalent to that. And then what's going to be the body of the function that's kind of equivalent to this thing, right? So let's just write x squared. Right. So we're not exactly subtracting a yet, right? But we're just the squaring the input. We're just the squaring the input, right? And then let's let's just uh, do that. So so now we have a function here, you know, fh, which is going to take a one input and then it's going to square that input, right? So let's let's do fh two. Then it's going to print out a four, right? So if you have just a one line in your function body, the anonymous function just allows you to do that very quickly, right? So can I actually can what, what's um, what can I do? What can I do if I if I have zero input, right? So so let's look at a different situation, right? So suppose it has zero input, right? Um, what what kind of function may have zero input? Um, um, so FH equals to at so so suppose we have a function that's uh, take a zero input data str right. let's see if this time it's going to work fh okay so 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 for for a function that takes zero input that's how how you can actually do that right so what exactly am I doing here, right? So data str is a matter of intrinsic function. So this function is going to take uh, one input. Right? And then the input that I'm sending to this data str function is called now. So now is actually a matter of intrinsic uh, variable. So, so so it's going to give you the seconds after like uh, 1970, 1970, uh, January 1st, 1970, right? that's the total number of seconds after that reference time right so so this this variable is going to keep changing uh, right so so you can sort of see it's it's not exactly as, is that a seconds i think maybe it's seconds right so so this number is going to keep changing with the time with the time on my clock right so it's like 11 19 now right so so every time I type, I look at the value inside it, uh, now, it's going to increase a little bit, right? So, so data str help uh, data str. That's a matter of an intrinsic function that's going to produce. Uh, it's going pr to take a, it's going to take a floating point number, which is actually the seconds, and then convert it into a formatted string that represents the date and time. Right, so it's got different kind of formats, right? So if I do date time, a uh, date str now, I will give it now, and then it's gonna tell me it's uh, October thirty uh, first, October twenty seventeen, eleven twenty oh six. That's that's how uh, well, that's what the date str actually work. How 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 date str actually works, right? So in my in my anonymous function fh, in my anonymous function, the body of the anonymous function inside of the body of the anonymous function, I'm actually calling the data str, the matter of intrinsic function, and then supply the, the, the intrinsic variable now as the kind of input, right? So so now fh is going to be a function handle to an anonymous function that's going to take zero input, because the parenthesis is empty now, and then the body of the anonymous function is just one line, and in this line, it's actually calling data str now, with a now as input, right? So the data str is a quite a complicated function. It's just it's 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 got more than one line, so definitely, right? It's a, 
but but inside of my knowledge function, I can call this really complicated function, which has more than one line, and then provide the correct input, or may, maybe more than one input, right? And then and then my if I want to use my anonymous function, all I have to do is to call the function and you know, fh with zero input, right, with an empty parenthesis, and then it's going to produce the correct output. Okay. So so that's how 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 anonymous function with uh, with uh, with the zero inputs, right? We looked at the zero inputs, one input, and then uh, maybe let's look at the, an anonymous function with two inputs, for example, right? So fh now equals to at again with x and a for example right with two inputs and then I'm the, the body of the function is just squaring it and then subtract a right um, yeah and then if I want to call fh I, I need to supply two inputs suppose um, I give like a five and then two so it's five squared subtract two that's 23 right so so if so that's how you actually use the anonymous function with two inputs, right? With two inputs, right? So why do we want to talk about an anonymous function, right? Why do we want to talk about an anonymous function? You see the f newton underscore function, it's going to take two inputs, right? But can we actually convert this function that takes two inputs with to, to an anonymous function that's going to take one input? Can we do that, right? Can we actually do that? So now if f so where do, where am I typing? I'm typing in the wrong place. Sorry about that. So let me let me go to the command window. So fh is gonna equal to at. So so our anonymous function is gonna take one input, right? Let's say x, right? But suppose suppose inside of this anonymous function, the body of the fu anonymous function, inside of the body of the anonymous function, we're gonna call f newton underscore function. Right? The, the the scenario that we are trying to actually um, this scenario is actually quite similar to when we actually call the data str function, right, inside of an anonymous function. Right. The anonymous function can call, inside of the anonymous function, we can call other functions that has a name, right. Except that here it's not taking any input, but now we're actually taking one input, x, right. And then here, here we're actually supplying one input to the data str function. That's kind of a fixed name, right? It's called a now. It's called a now, right? So, 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 can we actually do the same kind of thing, right? Suppose, suppose I wanna, I wanna convert this uh, two input function into a one input function with the with the value of a somehow kind of uh, fixed, right? Can 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 we actually do that? F Newton function x let's give like two, right? So. So inside of this particular anonymous function, we are calling this f newton underscore function. With the, with the with the the first input to this function is exactly the same as the input to the anonymous function. So the anonymous function is going to take one input, right? And that input is x here. And then we are going to pass this input to the anonymous function to the first input of the f newton function, right? And then we are going to fix the second input to two, right? So now we have a fh, suppose we give it like a, uh, again, 5, right, 5, but now we are giving it just one input, we're not giving it two inputs, see, right, do, do, do you see the difference from this thing, thing and this thing, right, do, do you see how, how, how this thing actually works, so fh5 also gives you 23, the reason is because it's going to call this f newton underscore function with 5 as the input, 5 as the input, right? So 5 is the only input to the fh function, and then it's passed over to f newton underscore function, right? So it's basically equivalent to f calling the f newton underscore function with 5 and 2 as two inputs. So f newton function, inside of the f newton underscore function, it's going to, it's going to square the 5 and then subtract 2. So it's going to print out a 23. So, so with equipped with this particular knowledge, let's try to see if we can modify our call, modify our call, right? Modify our call. So, so our definition of the Newton f Newton underscore function has changed to like two inputs, right? So if we go back to execute our script, it's not going to work, right? It's going to tell us not enough input arguments. Why? Because 
when it's calling f newton underscore function, it's providing just a, it's it's providing just a one input. So where it's actually calling this f newton underscore function, it's calling it here inside of the script, right? F newton two. It's calling f newton two inside of the script, and then f newton two is gonna call h. It's gonna call h here, right? It's gonna call h here. It's gonna call h here, right? H is what? H is what? H is FH. FH is the handle to the F Newton function. So, so, so when we are actually calling uh, HX inside of the F Newton two with just one input X, we are missing one more input. It requires one more input, right? So, can we actually fix that? Can we actually fix that? So, FH. Let's define a anonymous function. So fh is going to point to an anonymous function that takes just the one input, right? And then inside of the body of the anonymous function, we're going to call the f newton function with two inputs. And the first input is the input that's passed over to the fh function of to the to the to the anonymous function, right? That's x. And then the second input, let's give it some arbitrary values. Um, let's let's say two, right? And then let's see if we uh, if we if we can actually get to run, right now it's actually running and producing the correct output, right? Why it's running now? Because now you are passing f h to f newton two, right? And f h is what f h is the function handle to a anonymous function that takes just the one input, right? And then the second input is a kind of fixed. By you, right? When you actually, uh, it's uh, actually fixed by the user, by the user of this Newton's method algorithm, the f Newton two function, right? So if you want a different number, if you want to, if you want to find the root for a different, uh, a different a value, suppose five, for example, right? So all you have to do is to actually change this number five, and then let's run it, right? So that's gonna give you the root for x squared subtract five. It should be the same as square root of five, right? Okay, so the numbers are rounded. Let me give them more digits, like a, 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 a ten digits or something. So let's give it. Maybe ten digits is still not not like a, as long as this one. Seven nine seven eight. That's like twenty digits or something. Um, 20 digits is probably not. It's not. If we are using 20 digits, then our f newton 2 is probably not accurate enough. So it converges after like a 10 to the minus 8. So, so maybe maybe it's not a it's not a good idea to to, to use too many digits. Right? Let's still give like a 8 digits or something. Okay. Okay. So that's how we can actually use anonymous functions, right? That's how we can use anonymous function, anonymous functions, right? So suppose we want to change this thing to a variable, change the second input to a variable. We don't, we don't really wanna, we don't really wanna fix fix the number, right? We wanna sort of make it a variable, use a container here, right? That's a that's a good practice. That's always a good practice to actually abstract away those fixed numbers to a variable, right? If we are using some kind of variables inside of our anonymous function, then we have to be uh, slightly more careful. So, so let's do some more ex uh, experiments with anonymous function that has a has a has some kind of variable inside of it. So, so let's uh, still clear out everything inside of a command window, right? And then let's define a variable. Let's call it a. A equals to two, for example, right? So now we have a variable that's a equals to two, and then fh. Is gonna equal is gonna is is gonna be a function handle that's gonna uh, point into point to an anonymous function that takes one input. Let's just use x square subtract a for example, right? So now a is not an input, right? So if you look at the input for the uh, for the for the anonymous function, it doesn't have a second input. It just has one input x. And then inside of the body of the anonymous function, you are squaring it and then subtract with some number a, right? Some variable a, right? 
and uh, when you write this particular function, when you write this body of this particular anonymous function, right? Matlab, what Matlab is going to do is that it's going to take it's going to take the value that's stored inside of the variable a in your workspace, and for now a has a value of two, right? So what Matlab is going to do is that it's going to it's going to replace a with the number two, and then freeze the number two inside of it. So now fh, right? Fh, let's give it like five. Then it's going to print out twenty three. But you have to be careful. Suppose now if we change the value of a, say say we change it to like three, right? So now it has a, a has a value of three now, right? So now let's do fh five. It's still giving you twenty three. But why? Why? Because because a has changed. The the value of a has changed, right? To, from 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 two to three now. So so if. Uh, if uh, Matlab is going to do this particular calculation, then then what it's going to do? It's going to do uh, uh, five squares subtract three, right? Right. Five squares that's twenty five subtract three. It's supposed to give you twenty two, but why it's still giving you twenty three, right? The reason is because even though you have changed the value of a from two to three, you did not. I I did not. I did not redefine the function handle, or redefine this particular anonymous function using the new value of a, right? So the value of a was still freezing at, was still frozen at the time when this particular function handle was defined, right? So so when we define this particular function handle, a has a value of two, and that a was replaced explicitly, actually replaced with the number two, right? So effectively, this fh is actually pointing to a anonymous function that 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 has a body x squared subtract two, and that two is going to stay there forever. It's not going to change unless unless you redefine it. You re redefine this particular function here, right? So now let's redefine. It. Let's redefine the function here. So now we have executed this particular line again, and then now let's do f h five. Now it's giving us the correct value of twenty two, right? So so this is one of the things that uh, that's kind of a uh, tricky, and then we have to be quite careful, right? So this uh, if we are using variables, if we are using variables, if we are using variables when uh, when defining the body of the anonymous function. All those variables are going to be replaced with a value, with a number, with a number, at the time when this particular function handle is defined, right? And later on, if you change those variable names, uh, if you change those variable values, right, it's not gonna, it's not gonna change the definition of the function handle of the anonymous function, right? It's not gonna change the definition of the anonymous function, and then we need to actually re-execute this definition right of the in order to actually incorporate any kind of changes to the function value right uh, to, to, to the anonymous function so, so so suppose a equals to five right and then fh is going to equal to we give it a right and now let's uh, let's run it again right and then the result is still correct. The result is still correct, right? But now we have replaced the fixed value with the variable. And then suppose we change the variable five to like ten, right? Right. right. The the reason this is is going to work is every time we change the value of variable a, this line is re-executed. The definition of the anonymous function is re-executed, right? So every time we change a, this line is executed again. And with a with the second input as with, with the second input to the f newton underscore function ch changed to the new value, right? So 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 that's how we can actually uh, use a variable uh, together with a anonymous function, right? And suppose suppose I have no suppose I have no uh, no variables. 
Suppose I have no variables in my workspace. That's called A. Or A has no values inside of it, right? There's no variable. That's called A. Can I still do this thing, right? Can I still do this thing? Yeah, I can still. The, the, it looks like it's a, it's a, it's a working, right? But but when I actually call it, right? Then it's gonna tell me undefined function or variable A, right? So when you define this particular anonymous function with a variable that doesn't exist. Manavi is not going to complain because because um, you're you're creating a function handle that's going to be used for storing this particular anonymous function. That's not a syntax error, right? But when you actually call that particular function handle with a specific input, then Manavi will have to actually actually execute this line, this statement, this one line statement, right? And Manavi has to use the value a, and Manavi doesn't really know what the value a actually is, right? Even if you actually supply a equals to like a ten or something. Right, FH five. It's still gonna, it's, it's still not gonna work, right? You you now have a right. You now have the variable a here, and it's got a value inside of it, inside. It's got a value of ten inside of it, right? But 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 when you define this particular anonymous function, when you were defining this particular anonymous function, you didn't have a variable a, right? So 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 even though you have created a variable a afterwards, it, Malibu is still not going to recognize it. It's it's not intelligent enough to know that you want to put this uh, put this uh, variable or insert this variable into this particular place inside of your anonymous function, right? So the the definition of the anonymous function together with all the variables are frozen, right? All the values are frozen in there. When you actually define the anonymous function, if you want to use a updated values for those parameters, you have to sort of redefine that anonymous function by executing that line. Okay, so so now now um, now let's uh, let's uh, let's look at a slightly more complicated scenario. Let's look at a slightly more complicated scenario, right? So if we actually look at what's actually the nature of our program or the nature of our script now, right? It's actually for finding the square root of a, right? Essentially, right? Because because because, because what's actually the function here? The function is x squared subtract a, right? And then we're trying to find the roots or find the root of x squared subtract a equals to zero, right? So we're trying to find the x whose square is going to equal to a, right? So, so what this particular script is actually doing is basically just trying to find the square root of arbitrary input a, right? An arbitrary input a. So, can we actually define a function? Can we actually define a, uh, say, anony anonymous function, anonymous function? That's going to uh, use the Newton's method to find the square root of a arbitrary number, a arbitrary a, right? Let's see if we can actually do that. Let's see if we can actually do that, right? Um, so, so let's uh, let's uh, uh, let me let, let's let's do some experiments inside of the command window first, right? Let's do some experiments. So gh, let's define a new function handle. gh is going to be at, right? And then it's going to take one input. Let's let's just use the symbol a as. You can use any symbol, right? You can use the y, you can use the x, you can use the whatever symbol that you want. But just to be kind of closer to the scripts that's kind of we are already we have already written so far. Um, let's just use the variable a, right? And then gh is going to be a anonymous function that's going to take. Uh, that's gonna take um, take one input, right? Take one input, and then the task is to the body of the function is supposed to is supposed to give us the uh, is supposed to give us the the, the 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 square root of a basically, right? Um, so 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 how are we gonna sort of write the body of this anonymous function, right? The most important thing is probably for to to call f newton two, right? 
so so f newton two is probably f newton two is our implementation of the of the of the of the, of the newton's method function right and then it's going to take a bunch of inputs it's going to take a bunch of inputs so what's going to be what's going to be the first input right the first the first input is going to be what right the first input is supposed to be a function handle that's pointing to this uh, this this uh, this uh, this particular function, right? F newton underscore function. But this F newton underscore function is going to take two inputs, x and a, right? So what we have to do is to actually pass one anonymous function that's going to take one input that's called x, right? And then and then inside of this particular anonymous function, we're going to call F newton underscore function with both x and a as input, right? So so let's pass it. A anonymous function that's going to take one input x, and then f newton underscore function x and a as input. Right. So this x comes from where? This x comes from this anonymous function. Right. This anonymous function is going to take x as input. Right. So where is actually this a is coming from? A is coming from this thing. Right. Because this outside anonymous function is going to take a as input, right? So that's our, that's basically our first input. Right? And then the second input is still the the the, the anonymous function uh, is still a function handle that's pointing to pointing to f newton d function, right? X square subtract a. If you take a derivative with respect to x, it's always 2x, right? So, so, so that's just uh, so the body of the, this uh, derivative function doesn't have to change with a. So it's um, so we can just uh, keep using that particular function, you know. So at f newton d function, right? And then the third input is supposed to be some kind of arbitrary starting value. That's just uh, still using like a, maybe let's use a different starting value. Let's point, use a 1.0, right? And then that's our definition for gh, right? So gh now is a function handle, you know, and it's going to take one input, right? It's going to take one input. And then let's let's try to use gh, right? Gh, let's uh, let's give it like a, a four, right? So we know that f the square root of four is a two, right? right? So so this is a this is a so there might be some slight differences in the last digit, right? But uh, that's because of the precision of the f newton two. We're using ten to the minus eight, right? If you want more precision, you can change this number to make this even smaller. But it's going to take longer to execute. Right? And suppose if we want to find the root of gh like a uh, sixteen, right? Then it's like four. Right? And then suppose we want to find the root of um, uh, twenty-five. Right, that's like five, right? With um, the, the kind of the kind of precision is kind of getting worse. I I don't really know why, but uh, it looks maybe the starting value is like too far away from the true solution, right? So suppose you give like a 100, it's supposed to be 10, right? So So if we look at the, the f newton two, the core to f newton two that's inside of the body of this um, anonymous function that takes a as input, right? F newton two is supposed to give us like three outputs, right? It's supposed to give us like three outputs, right? But when we call gh with this a as input, it only printed out like one output, right? It only printed out one output. That's the square root, right? Why? Why? Just pointing out one output, and the 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 one output that's actually printed is actually x, the first output, right? So the value of f and the the, the iteration number n is kind of a lost, right? Maybe you are not interested in that, right? Maybe because the the purpose of gh is just to compute the square root of arbitrary numbers, right? Maybe you are not concerned about what's going to be the f value and what's actually the the iteration value. The iteration number, right? The iteration number. But sometimes maybe maybe you are, maybe you want to access those uh, multiple outputs, right? Maybe you want to access those outputs. So so how do you actually access those multiple outputs, right? You 
you do this you do this so uh, still uh, this x f a right you don't really have to use the x f a let's just use a, a b uh, g and then uh, num i t r iteration right and then if you look at the b that's 10 that's the square root right and then g that's going to be that's going to be the the function value that's a square sub square uh, x square subtract uh, 100 this particular function evaluated at this particular b value right right so if you actually b squared and then subtract 100 that's exactly the same as the function value here right and then what's going to be the iteration number num ITER, right? That's seven. So after seven iterations, it has converged to less than ten to the minus eight, right? Um. So if you if you want to access those uh, multiple outputs, so all you have to do is to actually call this particular anonymous function handle, just like the ordinary function, right? Just like the ordinary function. But now we are actually defining this particular function in a we have defined this particular anonymous function. We have defined this particular anonymous function in just one line, one line of code, right? And then we can actually use that to to do our calculations, right? So uh, that's that's how you can actually use anonymous functions in a slightly more complicated way, slightly more complicated way, right? Um. So, so, so that's anonymous function. Right? It's not just the, the Newton's method. The, the, this our own func our Newton's method function. It's gonna take anonymous functions. Uh, various MATLAB intrinsic functions, right? For example, integral, integral, or integrate. Can remember what's actually uh, integral. Right. Integral is uh, another matter of intrinsic function that's going to take anonymous functions or take function handles as inputs, right? So the basic usage is like that, integral. Right. So suppose we want to do an integration of x squared from like 0 to 1, right? So how do we actually do that? So how do we actually do that? Integral, so the first input is supposed to be a function handle, right? So, because our function is so simple, let's just uh, use a uh, one anonymous function. That's going to take one input, and then let's just uh, in the body of the function, let's just square it, right? And then that's uh, that's the, that's the function. That's the function that we want to integrate, right? When we actually do this kind of thing, it's actually creating a function handle, right? So this is a this is a the at symbol, right? At symbol is in front of the the definition of the function. So either a function name or the definition of the function uh, of the anonymous function, right? So and then let's go for the, the, the limit of the integral 0 to 1. Um, uh, maybe I maybe I defined uh, maybe I defined the function wrong. Okay, so so it has to use a dot here because it's an it's not really treating it as a one single number. You have to treat it as a vector. So so it's actually if the input x is actually a vector, then you have to do a dot square, dot hat square to actually do a component wise square. So the integral function is gonna the the function that's required by the integral function is gonna is gonna take a is gonna take a vector as input, right? But is it is it is it is it correct, right? So, so so x square. If you integrate x square, that's x a third divided by three, right? So and then the limit is zero to one, so it's uh, zero, right? So it's it's uh, so so yeah, it should be correct, right? It should be, it's it's one third, it's one third. So and then um. This is another example that's going to take function handles as input, and uh, why every function that that's going to take function handles as input can take uh, anonymous functions as input, right? So if you if the body of the function is really simple, then you can just uh, give it a, give it a, a, a one anonymous function, right? 
And then another function uh, that, that can be quite useful is called F0, I think. Right. That's also for finding the roots of particular functions. Right. It's kind of an equivalent to our own code for F Newton 2, right? But it's a MATLAB code. A single variable, non-zero, non-linear zero finding. It's basically for finding the roots of um, of particular functions, right? So let's 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 give it a try, right? F zero. Let's uh, let's um, let's call the function. Let's um, uh, at x, right? And then uh, inside of the anonymous function, let's do f Newton function. F U N C T R O N function. And then x, let's give it like a 100, right? And then, uh, let's uh, starting value, let's give it like a 1, right? Let's still give it a 1. So it's giving us 10. So it's giving us 10, right? Um, right, so, so, so that's the root, right? But let's, uh, let's try 10. So that's the square root of 10. Let's just find out how many digits it's actually accurate to. So, Seven nine eight zero. So the last two digits are kind of a, uh, different, right? So it's actually quite accurate. So the MATLAB's intrinsic F zero function is also quite accurate for us to find the roots of uh, of our function that's x squared subtract ten, right? And uh, um, so F zero and uh, uh, integral, right, f0 and integral, anything else that's c that can actually take uh, function handles as inputs. Um, these are two things that come to my, uh, these are two functions that come to my mind, but I'm not exactly sure if um, if I actually covered it. There are lots of these kind of functions that's going to take, um, that's going to take function handles as inputs. One of the one of the calculus problems that uh, students often have to solve is um, sort of a, you have some kind of a parameter inside of a particular expression, right? That's um, for example, if you have some kind of equation x square x dot hat square sub, uh, plus c times x subtract uh, plus one that kind of thing, right? And then you have to do a integral with respect to x from some kind of a range, say 0 to 1, right? And then, and then, the result of the integral is going to be a function of c, right? And then you may be, you, you may have, you have, may have to sort of make a plot with respect to c, that kind of thing, right? So, because the MATLAB actually provides this kind of integral function for you to actually do that. So, let's, let's, um, let's try to, um, let's try to solve this kind of problem in our command window. So gh, again we're defining a, let's, let's clear all, right, and then gh is going to equal to one anonymous function, right? And then the anonymous function for gh is going to be c. So the input to the, to the anonymous function is going to be c, right? And inside the body of this anonymous function, we're going to call integral. And then this integral is actually a matter of intrinsic function. It's going to take th three inputs. The first input is going to be the function that defines the the integrand, right? And then let's let's give it a, another anonymous function. Right? That's going to take x as input. That's going to take x as input. And then x square. The body of the anonymous function is x square plus c times x, right? And then plus one. That's going to be the body of the function, right? So, so the x is going to come from the input of this particular anonymous function, right? And then this c is going to come from this outside anonymous function, the input to the outside anonymous function, right? And then the second input is sort of the the starting value, the zero and one, this range, right? And now we have a function a function handle. GH that's going to take C as input, right? So for every given C, say when C actually equals to uh, 2, right? When C equals to 2, then MATLAB is going to take this value of 2, stick it in there, and then evaluate this particular anonymous function, right? 
that's x squared plus 2x plus 1. Right? And then this anonymous function is going to be used, the handle to this particular anonymous function is going to be used as the first input to the integral function. Right? And then Malab is going to carry out this particular integral from 0 to 1 and compute the value. Right? So it's going to give you this particular particular value. And at this point, you can you can you can try to make a plot, right? Make a plot. Uh, Malab has another. We, we we sort of looked at this particular function called a plot, right? But this plot function is gonna require us to actually create the horizontal and the vertical axis, uh, create, create the horizontal axis explicitly, right? We can still do that. Let's just do link space, right? Link space. Uh, maybe maybe it's not a good idea for for using link space. Um, so let's just call C goes from uh, link space. Minus one to to so minus minus five to positive five with like one hundred points, right? Oh, sorry. And then we can call gh gh. Uh, we can we can, can, can and then we can just plot c gh c. Can can we do that? Maybe maybe it's, uh, it's going to take c as um. I don't really know. Let's let's give it a try. No, it's not going to take c because c now is a c now is actually a a vector now, and it's not really taking a vector as input. So, um, so it's only computing computing for each value of c. So there's other ways of actually doing this thing. There are other ways of um, sort of so so so. But we haven't actually discussed those uh, different ways. So so let's uh, let's uh, let's call it um, uh, fc right fc so so for example fc is going to equal to zeros size c right and then we can do a for loop right for uh, ic goes from 1 to the length of c right so this might be slightly easier to understand so and then fc ic is going to equal to gc uh, gh c ic right and then end. So now fc is going to have all the values of that integral for each different c in the c array. And now we can actually make a plot, right? C and fc. It looks like a straight line. It's a straight line, actually. It's a straight line. Um, So, so that's how you can actually solve this particular problem, right? But if you know another plotting function that's called f plot, so f plot, f plot is for plotting functions, right? Um, so f plot also takes a function handle, see? It also takes a function handle as sort of the as sort of the input. So, so, so it's another example of using function handles, right? So, so let's let's just uh, plot f do f plot, f plot gh. Right. That's going to be our function handle, and then uh, let's specify the range. The range. Let's go from like minus five to five. All right, minus five to five. So uh, again, it's giving me it always give me this kind of a warning, right? Um, and then hold on, and then plot. Let me maybe use r dash dash or something. Right. So so both plots are actually giving me identical line, right? Giving me the same line. So which means that both calculations must be correct. Right? Okay. Both plots are actually correct. So 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 that's um that's anonymous functions and how we can actually use function handles together with anonymous functions to simplify lots of our calculations.